What do you think of when you hear the term BST model? Uh, we typically think of staff training or social skills, but in ABA, we can use it for so much more. Today, we're gonna to talk about the BST model and its various applications in more detail. Hi, I'm Shira. And I'm Shana. We're behavior analysts who create weekly content about how to teach children with autism so that they make real progress. And we create shareable resources to make your job just a little easier. Today's topic is all about the BST model. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on new video releases. So the first example I thought of when I was thinking of BST is a fire drill. Um, you know, I work in a school where we have to do monthly fire drills. And what's the point of that? Um, it's really BST, it's practice, because the more that you can practice something in a calm and contrived situation, like we all know it's a fire drill, they tell us what time it's going to be at, it's not unexpected, but we can practice it in a calm and contrived way. Um, the research shows that we'll be able to apply that practice to a real situation. So when it's not going to be as calm, and it will be a surprise, we'll know the drill, literally, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to perform the skill in, you know, the way that we practiced. So let's talk about BST a little bit more. So BST firstly stands for behavioral skills training. And, you know, when we first think about behavioral skills training, it was introduced as a staff training module. And we've talked about it before in previous blogs on how we use it with our staff. So go check out those blogs, but there's four parts to BST. And the first part is instruction. So it is really telling us like, why do we need this? So in staff training, that's really important, right? Like, look, we need this because we're teaching this skill to this learner, or this is important because of blah, blah, blah. But when you're doing this with a learner, like for instance, fire drills, this is important. We need this in case there's a fire. So you would give that instruction at a level that the learner can understand, you know, and then you would model. This is how you do it. Let me show you or, hey, let's do it together. You know, let me show you how we exit, how we, you know, be, you know, do this in a very calm way. It's OK. The bell's loud, but the, it'll be OK. Let's practice. Um, so that's the modeling piece of it. And then I got ahead of myself. We've got rehearsal is the third part, and that's the practicing piece. Um, rehearsal is really about practice, 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 practice. And then there's the fourth component which is the feedback and the feedback is just about saying yeah you know what you did this really great but try this and you don't want to give too much feedback you only want to give you know like one thing that they can focus in on to do better on next time because if you give them too much it can be overwhelming so those are the four parts really quickly so you've got your instruction your modeling your rehearsal and your feedback but let's talk about that with respect to some ABA programs yeah, so I want to talk a little bit more about that rehearsal piece. I think that we forget how valuable practice is. Um, there are so many times where our students need to show skills in the moment and we whip out all of our tools and we have the visual and we have reinforcement and we have you know prompts going in and supporting them to show the skill, but we forget how important it is for them to practice that skill out of the situation. So if we're talking about you know a student being able to engage in some sort of calming strategy, and obviously that's going to be most effective effective to use when they are upset about something or they're feeling dysregulated. Um, but that's not going to be the most effective time to, to learn the strategy. You will need to have practice scenarios. And the closer your practice scenarios can get to a real life situation, the better. You might not start with something very similar to a real life situation. You might start with something that's like really a lot more benign and then move towards situations that are a little bit more, you know, difficult for the student to tolerate but you can't forget those practice situations because that's when they're learning the skill in order for them to be able to generalize it to a more difficult situation. We had a learner who um, was out in the community and he hated dogs. He couldn't tolerate dogs. Dogs would walk by and he would be really scared. And I understand that, but you can't avoid dogs your whole entire life if you're going out in the community. So we practiced inside his house and it started literally 
inside his house in a safe zone. And we said, okay, we're going to practice walking on the sidewalk. And just what would you do if a dog walks by? Let's talk about some things. So we talked about it at first and then we actually role played. And I think he got one of his stuffies off his bed and we put it on a string that was like a leash and he got all into it. And it was really cool. And the therapist pretended to be, you know, somebody walking a dog and, you know, he pretended in a safe spot in his house to be able to say, no, thanks. I don't want to pet your dog. He also pretended to cross the street and walk a different you know walk on the other side of the street he also pretended to just jump back onto someone's grass I think it was a piece of his carpet and uh you know let the dog walk by I think he also practiced a few other techniques and breathing techniques that type of thing to calm him um and we practiced that a lot inside his house you know and then we started practicing it out in his backyard and then we started practicing it literally on the sidewalk in front of his house that then that led to, you know, more generalization. And when he actually did get into the community, we were able to give him some cues, like, remember what we practiced. Okay, remember, what are some things you can do? And we primed him a little bit ahead of time so that when he was in that situation, he knew what to do. And he was, it wasn't perfect on the first try and it wasn't perfect on the second try. Um, but we were able to do it in a way that we didn't have to just teach in the moment. We were able to take a lot of teaching trials ahead of time using that BST model and him being able to then generalize that later on. And it's also important to still include reinforcement. So that's the, you know, the feedback component. So in your practice trials, there should be reinforcement. There should be access to whatever it is that's motivating, whether it's praise or a preferred item or anything like that. We had a student who had a really hard time coming inside after recess and it would escalate and it resulted in a lot of challenging behavior. Um, and it was, it was hard to, in that moment, bring out any kind of tools like reinforcement and things like that. So what we would do is create practice situations before he would even go outside where before being allowed to um, completely play in the playground, we had to do 10 practice situations of coming inside um, from recess. So we would practice that 10 times. He would access, you know, his reinforcer 10 times to be able to really, you know, intensively practice that skill. And then he was able to go and play. And we found that it really did help with coming inside at the end of recess because he had practiced that skill so often. Shira mentioned social skills and BST. I use a lot when teaching social skills, but so many times, you know, there's, there's different videos, you know, that exist, whether they're YouTube videos or, you know, model me kids or everyday speech videos or any other video modeling series. And a lot of times people will have, you know, kids in a social skills group or kids one-to-one -one watch these videos and then say, Hey, there's the social skill. Okay. Now go out and do it. And it doesn't work, you know, if, if people are watching these videos or these video models and that's all they're doing, that's not enough. We need to have them practice that, practice it over and over and over again. And then, like Shira said, give that feedback, give that reinforcement, you know, for the positive things and maybe give one type of corrective feedback so they can do it better next time. I've actually gone so far and actually videoed some of the social groups that are happening or some of the video practice. So when they're practicing, they can see themselves then afterwards. And that feedback component could be just, hey, I'm watching this video of myself. Hey, look at this. These are really great. Pause that right there. Did you see what you just did there? That was amazing okay let's watch a little bit more i'll pause it right there see here when she said this what could you have said right there you're right you could have said that that's amazing okay let's keep going whoa but there that was incredible giving mainly positive feedback but when they're watching themselves on video that's feedback they they can critique themselves and the research really supports that rehearsal component as part of the model um, if you think of something like social stories and things like that, they may have some other components of this BST where you're getting the modeling, you're getting the instruction, but you can really make it um, a better way to teach according to the research by incorporating that rehearsal. So if you want to use a social story or a video model or something like that as a modeling component, that's great. But don't forget to incorporate that rehearsal component for any one of the skills that you really want to see more of. And not just the rehearsal, but the rehearsal at a time where it's calm, it's quiet, it's contrived, and you can slowly bring them closer and closer to that real life situation. You bet. So, you know, we have a blog on BST right now. It is more about staff training, but if you want to dive into the world of BST, check that out. Um, and uh, there's a few blogs that we've written on the BST model.
So click on click the link in and around this video to check out our behavior blueprint for some more programming techniques. And in the behavior blueprint, we actually you know talk about how we use role play and BST for our learners in some of our programs. For more information on behavioral skills training, click the link on or around this video or in the description to join our behavior blueprint and to learn more programming techniques involving role play and BSD. We also encourage you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos and leave a like and comment below if you have further questions.